We're going to try to, I have some images I'm going to show, and if I'm going like this, it's because I'm trying to do a remote change the slide please thing. So, as we're approaching, next week is Thanksgiving, uh, sooner than I thought, and I thought it'd be a pr an appropriate time for me to read uh, an excerpt from the Haudenosaunee uh, Thanksgiving prayer. It's also relevant to the work that I'll be talking about in a few moments. It's a very beautiful prayer. It's a prayer in which there are 18 natural elements that are, are given thanks for. My home while growing up, while I was growing up, was in the midst of the Haudenosaunee uh, lands of, of these people, the League of Six Nations as they are known by Canadian settlers. So I'm going to start. I'm going to start with just one little excerpt from that prayer. I'm going to start with the thanks for water, and this is how the prayer goes. We give thanks to all the waters of the world for quenching our thirst and providing us with strength. Water is life. We know its power in many forms, waterfalls and rain, mists and streams, rivers and oceans. With one mind, we send greetings and thanks to the spirit of water. Now our minds are as one. In my work, I, I believe that I am called to be an observer of nature and of culture. That's, that's the work that I do. And to ask questions that are associated with that. For me, it's always been to ask, this is us. Are, are we good with that? and variations of that very question. So just for a few brief moments, I'm going to show you some of the work from a previous show that I did that I think will flesh out the work that I'm doing with, uh, with Muskrat Falls right now. And so this exhibition, click, there we go, <laughs> that I did a few years ago was called This Salty Water. I hired people to dress in business attire and to jump in the water. I took scuba diving lessons and I rented camera equipment and I jumped in the water too and took pictures of these people as they tried to swim underwater. I then took those images and I changed them, I, I, I recreated them in different ways and eventually they became a, a seergraph print slash painting. Now the numbers that you'll see, maybe now that I'm pointing them out, um, there are actually stock market quotes of the day. And they're kind of in the water swimming with the person. They are like they are the water. It's, it is the water. In my opening, I read that water is life. Water is also somewhat of a universal signifier in film and in literature. And when used in the context of the protagonist in the story, it generally shows a marked change in the protagonist of that story, a new level of awareness, an understanding, a, maybe a change in their worldview. In these cases, water is used as a symbol of baptism, it's used as a symbol of rebirth, and an awakening, like a special aha moment. And you can also drown in water. So given our economic prowess in modern civilization today, in modern civilized society, how are we doing with that? How are we doing with it? Are we, are we watching out for each other, really? Or are we sinking? Have we learned yet to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God? What does the water of Muskrat Falls, sorry, that's too far. <laughs> what does the water of Muskrat Falls now signify for any of us? And I think that would probably vary for, for many people, depending on which side of the, of the dam we're standing. My premise in my work for many, many years has always been that, I could, that the economics of the land, it's the economics of the land that shapes a culture. Whether that be a, a hunter-gatherer society, or a industrially dependent society. And without getting too much into this, 
um, this used to be now one of the signifiers for Newfoundland. You'll see an image of a, the one cent stamp from 1932. The codfish on there with the word codfish and to emphasize it in quotation marks, Newfoundland currency. Can't get much more obvious than that. There it sits. But for today, maybe it's different. The Newfoundland oil industry lives off of our shores in our water and has sustained our economy in, in recent years quite a bit, has changed our culture, I would suggest. Or is it this? Water and the things that we get from it. In 2017, I, I did an artist residency in, uh, at the Labrador Institute Research Station in Northwest River. Now, prior to going to Northwest River, I, I went to hear and was quite impressed with Dr. Trevor Bell as uh, he gave a summation of the point, uh, sorry, he gave a summation of the joint research project put together by uh, a team of independent researchers from Munn University, from the University of Manitoba, and from Harvard University. They carried out a rather detailed study of the Lake Melville estuary, and most notably, an assessment of methylmercury as it filters and integrates into the ecosystem downstream of Muskrat Falls. Now, I don't know that I need to explain this, but methylmercury is a particularly nasty toxin that is abundantly produced in newly flooded reservoirs where, where the soil is not removed and the, um, the plant life is not removed. As methylmercury becomes biometabolized and ingested and integrated into the very flesh of a fish, so it also becomes a part of that which eats the fish. Especially detrimental to women and their unborn children. And that's not only for people, it's for the animals as well. Dr. Bell and his colleagues also took note of how this change in the local economy of the land would have far-reaching cultural consequences. So while I was in Northwest River, I knew that I was going to be doing something with fish. I thought I was just going to go out there with my fishing rod, catch a couple fish, go into the studio they gave me, and do some work. But what happened was that the people there said, well, I can take you out, but we're not going to catch anything. It's the wrong time of year. <laughs> so then I started asking for fish, asking people if they had a fish. This ended up being a blessing in disguise for me because it brought me into a lot of conversations that I wouldn't otherwise have had. People asking me, well, why do you need the fish? What was I going to do with the fish? and then all the other very important secondary discussions that took place at that time. Now there's a lot of support from the people there to help me find someone who might provide me with a whole frozen fish. I needed a whole fish. And everyone, everyone, I mean everybody had fish in their freezer. Everybody but it was all cut up already or the head was cut off or something like that. So eventually the people in Northwest River who take care of the community freezers, they donated a whole trout to this project. And another person donated an entire salmon from their personal freezer for this project. It was very touching for me. It meant a whole lot more in the end than me going out and catching the fish. This was a big community engagement project all of a sudden. When I put all the information together, I decided that I would do a controlled burn of the fish. I was going to burn the fish in a controlled environment, something that I had made. And if you want to know how I did it, you can ask later. I wanted to turn the fish into ash, so that it would, but I wanted it so that it would still appear that the fish was still there. So here's the image of the fish that I had after I had taken it out of the fire. Here the fish is completely burned, completely burned, but still oddly present. At this stage, when I'm handling it, I hardly dare breathe on it. It's very, very fragile. 
the way I saw it, essentially, fish were as viable as a food source as the ashes would be. Anybody want fish ash for supper? The fish that would bring life also now brings slow death. Death of the body, but also of a lifestyle, of a culture. And at the same time, these ashes, you can turn that off, these ashes hold on to a memory that are the remnants of what once was. Now that's not so foreign to us, actually, if you think about it. How many people don't we know that keep the ashes of loved ones? I know people um, make jewelry of the ashes of their loved ones. People carry a locket with a little bit of ash uh, in, of their loved ones. Some people keep the ashes of their pets, all to serve as a memory. And also, since I grew up in a Christian home, I've often read and I've been taught about stories from ancient Jewish and Hebrew writings that ashes were often used as ways of showing penance. Covering oneself with ash was a sign of absolute penance or repentance. Woe is me for what I have done. When I look at Muskrat Falls, I do know that I am complicit, as are most of us, simply because we have all been roped into using that kind of hydro to sustain our lifestyle. It's very, very difficult to get away from. If it's not in our homes, at least it's in the society around us that sustains us different ways. And so here are a couple of images of the fish that I have done, where you see then they are now preserved as a memory. They are encased, and there's an example of it sitting right here on the table, now in an epoxy cube, as it were. And if you look close, I don't think you can see it on the slides, you will see little drops of silver mercury added to the, to the epoxy. And another image. And the next one. That's a close-up. And then this image. That's the image that's sitting on the front of the table here. It's the job, I believe, of the artist to look at the world around us and in some way be a sociologist, be an anthropologist, be a philosopher, and to make strange the world around us so that we see it better. Making art, I think, is a political act. I'm an artist. I'm not an activist. So I want to finish with another part of the Hadnoshani prayer, still another section from the same prayer, the Thanksgiving prayer that I read earlier. And this, is, um, this part of the prayer is, from the, is a prayer of thanks to the fish element of the water. And it goes like this. We turn, excuse me, we turn our minds to all the fish life in the water. We are instructed to cleanse and purify the water. They also give themselves to us as food. We are grateful that we can still find pure water. So we turn now to the fish and we send our greetings and thanks. And now our minds are one. Think. Think of how we have made it impossible for the fish, for the fish life to safely filter the water. We have done that. Maybe we need to add to that prayer, woe is me for what we have done to you. Then, now maybe our minds would be as one in ashes and penance. Thank you.